The first step in removing the radiator is to open the drain cock, which you'll discover is virtually inaccessible on the right hand side of the radiator. So we opted for loosening the left lower radiator hose from the radiator and we're in the process of draining the radiator from that side. Since we're upgrading the radiator and cooling system as a whole, we will replace the upper and lower radiator hoses and the water pump as part of this project. In this case, we've lowered the lower radiator hose to drain the engine block from the water pump and we will be in a much better position to get all of the coolant out of the engine and the radiator before lifting the radiator out of position. As a matter of routine, the antifreeze will be replaced. We're putting in a brand new radiator and we'll want to make sure that the antifreeze is up for the task. We're inspecting for corrosion. That will remove the upper radiator hose and also the heater hose from the thermostat housing at the top of the engine. Okay, with the heater hose out of the way and the clamp up on the upper radiator hose, we can remove the upper radiator hose from the thermostat housing. And to save time, we'll simply remove the hose at the thermostat housing end and get it up here out of the way. When we lift the radiator out, that hose will come out with it. We can get the other clamp off at that stage. We've loosened the overflow hose from the radiator filler neck best thing to do is to thread it out through the loops and leave the loops in place and simply coil the hose up and out of the way. This plastic bracket has seen better days. This is a support for the overflow hose at the upper radiator hose. The connector for the factory auxiliary fan has a plug that attaches to the fan shroud. These connectors are very fragile. Very carefully Move the spring clip over to release this tab. And the objective here is not to force these parts. If you move that spring tab over first, this will slide out here. At this point, you can take the small screwdriver and pry the lock tab back. At this stage, these two pieces should separate. There's the plug. These are the two fan plug pieces. Remember, this is really brittle plastic as these parts get older. So don't force anything or you will be replacing plugs and these are not easy plugs to replace. These two upper fan shroud screws can come out next so that you can remove the electric fan. The screws are buried underneath the loops for the coolant recovery system hose, but they are accessible. Once these two loops and screws are removed, you should be able to lift out the fan shroud with the electric fan straight up and out of position. The bottom of the fan shroud are these two lock clips and simply pulling this up should release it. Remember to disconnect the cord first. The fan is now loose, wire connector is intact and in place. Now we'll do the same thing with the fan shroud. This is a mechanical engine driven fan. The shroud. There are two screws again in these positions. We'll remove those. There's snap clips in the bottom of the shroud. We should be able to pull the shroud straight up once we remove the two screws. The air tools speed up this process. If you were doing this job in a shop on flat rate time, you'd certainly want to use air tools for these tasks. This is a quarter inch socket set, quarter inch drive Chicago pneumatic air gun, quarter inch ratchet, and I use an inline oiler to make sure my air tools are functioning properly and stay oiled. The next factory step is to loosen the transmission cooling lines from the radiator. This would be at the driver's side on left-hand drive models. It's a special disconnect tool for the lower hose and the upper tube simply has a nut on it which we can loosen with a flare wrench. The correct tool for this task is a flare nut wrench or socket in this case. This is a flare socket attached to a 3 8 inch ratchet. I'm loosening the upper transmission cooling line from the radiator. Once it's broken loose, I can actually rotate it with just 
the flare socket and the compression nut comes loose readily. Now, we don't want to contaminate the transmission fluid. To prevent contaminants from getting into the transmission, we're going to cap this tube, put a clean cap on the end of this flare and the tubing to prevent any contaminants from getting into the cooling line to the AW4 automatic transmission. One of the more difficult fittings to disconnect is this coupler on the lower hose for the automatic transmission. As cramped and crowded as that fitting is, we'll wait until we're lifting the radiator out to actually disconnect that hose from the radiator elbow. I'd like to add that this hose itself is vulnerable to chafing against the steering gear. This is an original equipment hose installed at the factory and I can feel on the back side of it that it's got a notch in it. And when this is apart, I may go ahead and replace this hose as a matter of course before it blows out in service. At this stage, it's highly recommended that you loosen the negative battery cable, even though this will cancel your clock and your radio cassette and other things. Here we've loosened the negative battery cable. Just as a safety precaution, we're working around electrics. We're pulling a radiator out that has antifreeze coolant dripping from it. It's a good idea to disconnect the negative cable on the battery. Here I'll go ahead and loosen the strap bolt that supports the upper automatic transmission cooling line at the base of the radiator. We'll go ahead and we'll mark the striker position so that during reassembly we can make sure to get this in the same position. This metal marker comes in very handy for this. With the striker latch marked so that we can put it back in position, we can remove the hardware from the cross member. We'll start with the striker using our Torx drivers and in this case we're going to loosen the hardware. We'll begin by removing this angle bracket. The impression left by the nut will tell us where to place these again. Now we remove the torque screws. and take that angle bracket out. Next we'll use our 10 millimeter socket and remove the hardware on top of the cross member. Again, we're not marking this because the impressions made by the nuts will give us a guideline on reassembly. Don't forget the bolts that are on this side of the bracket. This one will remove with a ratchet wrench. This last bolt will remove with a box end 10 millimeter wrench. There's no way we're gonna get an air ratchet or air gun in there. It's uh, pretty close to the battery box here as well. We should be able to get it out without removing the battery. And we'll loosen the battery hold downs and slide the battery out of position, this bracket has to come loose anyway. With the last screw out of place, the battery moved to a side just slightly to do so. You can lift this piece out and that cross member is your upper support for the radiator. At this point the radiator can actually come out. Remember we have to disconnect that lower transmission cooling line on the other side and we can remove this radiator hose now if we're inclined to do so or it can come out with the radiator. Since we have air conditioning we have one more step before we remove the radiator. The radiator is actually loose now but we have the air conditioning condenser at the front here. So we'll loosen the top support nuts for the condenser and free the condenser from the radiator. In this case, we'll be able to do that without uncoupling the air conditioning hoses or air conditioning lines. And in the process, we won't have to recharge the air conditioning system since we're just removing the radiator and putting it back in. We'll take those two speed nuts off. And that separates the radiator from the air conditioning condenser and allows us to leave the condenser and the air conditioning lines in place as we remove the radiator. Get this up high enough in position, place a block of wood under this side to support that end of the radiator and we'll uncouple that lower automatic transmission cooling line. Okay, with a block of wood supporting this side of the radiator, I now have access to this hose and can use a coupler tool to uncouple a hose from the radiator. You can use a factory tool or you can go after market. 
This is readily available at auto supply stores and comes in assorted sizes for different couplers. With the correct tool in place, we simply push the tool inward, release the spring. This is the relationship of the tool, the hose, and the coupler. The tool slides in and releases the spring inside the hose and allows the hose to slide off the end of the elbow. And I wanted to illustrate that. This is the proper tool. It takes two seconds if you use the tool. You'll damage both the coupler and this tube if you fail to use the proper removal tool. Again, very inexpensive in the long scheme of things. Buy the tool. The radiator should now be free. Both the lines are out of the way. This hose is loose. Lift the radiator up carefully and out of the engine bay. And that's the radiator removal. We'll cap off this transmission cooler line to make sure that we don't get any contaminants into the AW4 transmission. And then we're going to remove the belt, the water pump, and the fan and fan clutch. Transmission lines are both capped now. And the radiator is out. Air conditioning condenser is still in place. Line's not disturbed. We won't have to recharge the AC system. If this was just a radiator replacement, we could actually stop at this point, but we're going to do the water pump and also change the drive belt.